tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, I want to show you a problem today and how to solve it. This is a clip which I rendered for one of my previous tutorials. And you see it's very nice, the light changes. There's somebody down here and you see his shadow now here. So, um, and she's slightly out of focus because I used depth of field here. Uh, in this scene, but the light is flickering all the time, so it's basically unusable. And uh, in another shot I did this. You see the sun turns around. When it comes back from the other side you see that flickering again. Here it comes. So from one frame to another we have different exposure. This is from frame to frame. It's not pleasant at all. I posted this question in the Autodesk Maya area forum and I got a reply pretty soon. The Arnold documentation about the physical sky, which is the only light in the scene that I just showed you, uh, states that this is an experimental shader. Although it has been tested extensively, please be warned before using it in production. And up here we see the shader implements a variation of the Hosek Wilkie Sky Radiance model. Who is Hosek Wilkie? Well, this is their paper, I think from 2012, yeah. The Sky Dome Appearance Project. And they presented this research in May 2013 at SIGGRAPH in probably Los Angeles. And here you have the PDF if you like to get into this deeper. And here you see their tests and uh, their implementation of this sky dome shader. It simulates light from the sun and a real realistic atmosphere, so to say. There are many other research papers about this topic, simulating the colors of the sky, for example. And here we have atmospheric scattering, etc. It's a really complex thing with this dust here, and it has to do with mathematical equations, of course. Yet another paper deals with the physically based night sky model. It was, uh, it's a paper by Stanford University, MIT, and the University of Utah. And here you see uh, the, the, the stars and basically some ver uh, very dim light, but uh, it's not possible to create such a light effect with just uh, a single light which you just dim down because the whole atmosphere has an ingredient, uh, ingredient or ingredients which are really sophisticated and that's why we need special equations. Physically based simulation of twilight phenomena, so that's between the night and the day. And the Arnold sky, uh, physical sky deals only with the daylight. So it's a mathematical process and uh, it comes basically, the, the, the core of the mathematics here comes from Rayleigh. It's called Rayleigh scattering. And here you see an image here, this is the English Wikipedia page. And as you know, I like to advise you to help extending the articles in the Wikipedia. For example, when we go to Romania, this is a very slim article. So if you are from there and uh, know how to translate things from English, please help the Wikipedia pages in other languages to get better. Well, who is Rayleigh? Well, that's Rayleigh. The Lord Rayleigh, he is actually called John William Strutt, but he became so famous and he got the Nobel Prize in Physics, I think. Uh, so he became the third Baron Rayleigh. And um, he was a quite a shy boy, but uh, he in evolved to a one of the leading mathematicians. He was born in 1842 and he died in 
right after the First World War, 1919. And let's have a look at him a little bit closer. This, this is the standard image we see from him, but there are lots of other images where he's younger. He, this is probably colorized uh, afterwards. And I like this picture here as well, which is in the Creative Commons domain of Wikipedia as well. So I've said enough, I think, and I'll show you what to do. We're in Maya now and we create just a simple plane. For example, this NURBS plane. And in the attribute editor, I can, of course, change the width and the length ratio and the patches in U and V, etc. Now, in order to see this effect a little bit better, let me use a little bit of deformation here. So that's fine for now. And now I need a light and that's the Arnold Lights physical sky. That's what we're talking about today, the physical sky. And uh, the default settings of the physical sky have a sun size of 0.51. And that's the realistic size of the sun. When we're on Earth, we see the sun with this size here. This is basically how the physical sky shader st uh, light starts. When we render this in Arnold, we can render it in the viewport right here. When we go to the azimuth, we see how we can rotate the sunlight, which sits quite high so we don't see the sun, but we can lower the elevation so the sun goes down. So we see almost a twilight situation here. And here you see the sun. That's the natural size of the sun. Of course, you don't see any flickering when you keep the sun in a stable position. But once you animate the sun, you run into that problem. So let's animate the position of the sun uh, by right-clicking on azimuth. And we set a key here. We're currently at frame number one. So we go at, to the end here. And now we change this just so the sun walks over here. And we set a second key. So we have two keyframes now and when we run this rendering here we see how the sun moves from left to right. Okay and now I go to the render settings and I call this physical sky tutorial 01 PNG and I start frame is 1 and the end frame is 120. And I don't need a big resolution here. So it's 960 by 540. And I just go to rendering and render the sequence. Or if you have a full license, not the student license as I have it, uh, you can uh, batch render it, which is, uh, where is it? Batch render, which invokes a separate process. So you can keep working with Maya, whereas uh, my viewport is blocked now through the render sequence dialog. From a distance it doesn't really look that bad, but if you have a closer look at the bottom here, at the landscape, you see that flickering. And when I do the same rendering with a little bit more intensity, because it's a very dim light anyway, in the late evening I guess, you can see in this shot from the top how massively it flickers. Well, the solution to the whole problem is going to the Physical Sky Attribute Editor. And in the attributes you find two parameters which are of critical size here. If you don't see the sun in the rendering, like you just didn't see the sun because we looked from the top down onto the landscape, you can just set the sun size to any value here. And if you raise this to from 0 0.5 to 1, you get a much better result. Let's render this. This looks quite clean, so maybe you can stick to this. Uh, the other option is going back to the original sun size 5.1, 0.5.1. And then we need to go to the AI Skydome light shape, which is basically the 
the sphere here and we change the resolution. The default is 1000. When we go to 2000 and render this again, we get a clean scene as well. There's still a little bit of flickering here, but uh, as, as I said, change the resolution. You can crank it, it higher, of course, from 2000 to 3000 or whatever, and change the size of the sun. And uh, these two parameters are excellent for making the physical sky work in production. Use the Maya area in order to get your questions answered. I find it very hard to go back to one of my 400 plus tutorials and please do use that forum, Autodesk, my area, rather than asking me questions because uh, I cannot, I just don't have the time to answer them. Uh, if I get uh, a question for the tutorial number 52, which was maybe three years ago, about this and that, a very specific question, very wise question in most cases, uh, I just don't have the time to go back to that tutorial. I just want to go on to the next tutorial I'm going to make. And uh, with this, I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.